So hello and welcome to my session. I am Vlad and I have been doing the Bitcoin Takeover podcast for three years. Initially, I was planning to do a presentation about explaining lightning in a way that even a 10 year old can understand it. But Jeff Fulmo basically challenged me when I was supposed to get a passport in three days. And to get the passport that fast, I had to get a letter from the conference organizers and justify the emergency. And he made up a title of my presentation like this one, Lightning Network from Traditional Media to Podcasting 2.0. And I took it as a challenge. I said, okay, I'm going to do this. At least I'm going to learn something new while I do it. Obviously, for those watching on video, this is on Lightning Hack Day in Istanbul, February 25th to the 28th. And you're watching me, but possibly you don't know much about what I do. I started a podcast in 2019. It's called Bitcoin Takeover. I've been writing about Bitcoin full time since 2017. And I've given 50 magazines at this event. I know that two of you got it, three of you didn't. <laughs> so I'm really sorry. There, there are going to be more opportunities for you to get them. Yesterday, I was caught by surprise because I was supposed to get them today, but they brought them earlier by one day. I couldn't carry them to the hotel room. So I said, okay, I'm going to give them all today. So I, uh, I get, you know, without breaking my back, I get to the hotel room. So yes, why start a podcast in 2022? And we have this situation with Twitter Spaces, which are a big competition to the concept of podcasts. It's a lot easier to just get on Twitter and talk to people. You get into some sort of group chat, and you can raise your hand, you can intervene. But from my experience, it's very low quality. Usually the expect expectations are set very high because the guests are of high caliber and you, you expect them to say interesting stuff. But there are so many technical problems that most of the times they end up just asking each other, can you hear me? What happened? Oh, I just dropped out. Okay, what were you saying? I don't remember. Let's move on. It goes like that. It's like if you're on TeamSpeak or Ventrilo in the early 2000s, Playing video games, it's a lot like that. And not only that, but it doesn't really enable multi-speaker overlap. I don't know what it's called technically. So you can't really talk at the same time and let others understand what you're saying. So you can't really have arguments and debates. Everyone must wait until the other one finishes talking. So the pacing is kind of destroyed. I think the only pro of Twitter Spaces is that anyone can raise their hand and participate when they want to say something. But the drawback is that it's low quality. You can't really develop a conversation, a debate. And I think that podcasts are still king in this regard and I don't see how they're going to improve. And podcast also offers you the opportunity to self-host your content, which I think is huge on Twitter Spaces I guess you can download the conversation, but what are you going to do with it unless you start a podcast? It doesn't make much sense, or you're going to publish it somewhere. So you should turn it into a podcast because that's the only way you know it's going to be there. With self-hosted stuff or YouTube and Anchor, which is like the YouTube that's owned by Spotify and is only for podcasts, these services are going to ban a lot of content. When I first started Bitcoin Takeover in 2019, it was still during the time when YouTube was banning stuff related to Bitcoin. So I decided to rent servers and publish my podcasts on them. There is the trade-off of latency because the servers are based in one place and somebody from the other side of the world is not going to be able to access them very fast, which I guess Anchor is better at because they're based in multiple places and jurisdictions. But you know, we are in Bitcoin and we like to self-host stuff, we like to own stuff. And even if it's just podcasts and digital content, it's very important. And if you want to go full Bitcoin spirit, you have open source tools that are free that you can use for your podcast. One that I use is Podcast Generator, which is kind of a tragic story because the software is good, but it's no longer maintained. It's been abandoned. It has all the features, it works, there's nothing for me to complain about it, but the developer just gave up on it, passed the admin keys to somebody else who also abandoned it. So it doesn't get any updates, but it works. 
and it gets my RSS feed on all platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and also get a free player. So you can use it, for example, you can open the website with Tor, and you listen to the podcast with full privacy, with no signups, and you can even download it separately for offline listening. You don't have to be connected to the internet at all times for listening. And WordPress is also a powerful tool if you have a website and you want to integrate your RSS feed into the page. That can help you basically create the same interface that you have with something like Anchor, which is like custodial. You should not really use it if you take it seriously. And in this picture, I have one of the issues of my magazine, which contains you know, a description of all nine seasons of my podcast. And Giacomo, you are in the audience, and also Mir, you are part of it in season seven. I will not go into much detail, except for the fact that I open sourced this. So if you go on btctkdr.com, there is magazine in the menu, and you can read the full magazine online if you don't have a physical copy. You can even download every page on GitHub, and that helps you generate your own magazine if you want to print it or if you want to sell it, that's your problem. It's under a Creative Commons license which enables you to, enables you to do whatever. Even I took some sponsorship money and some pages have ads. You can remove them and build your own magazine if you want without the ads, which I think is useful. We need more podcasts in the Bitcoin space. And I know people like, Okay, I'm not going to name any names, but other podcasters complain that there are too many Bitcoin podcasts, and we should just stop and focus on the ones that are good. But I think that there's niche content that we need, because everyone tries to do something like Joe Rogan, have guests and be very general about everything, not to touch anything specific, and everything is on the surface. But we need podcasters to talk about Liquid, we need podcasters to talk about Lightning, we need podcasters to talk about everything that's getting built on Bitcoin. And if you just have a few hosts who get guests from all across the board, that's not enough for you to focus on a specific task. I know that there's a podcast for Bitcoin for developers, and that's very useful for onboarding new developers and teaching them basically the whole toolkit of, of how to get involved. And there's also the argument of regionalized content because we are stuck in some sort of English bubble and most of the times you, you stumble across people who get their information mostly from ship cleaners who direct their audience to some sort of shady exchange which pays them commission and you discover that they don't know anything except for what they were taught by these people who are not really benevolent in their intentions, or selfless, or not interested by any personal motivations. So, if you want to educate, you need to start a podcast in your own language. I'm trying to do one in Romanian. It's not very successful, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it just for the sake of it, because I know it's useful to have it out there as a way to counterbalance what's already successful. And there are different approaches to topics, guests who have great ideas but aren't popular yet. So, usually if you look at Bitcoin podcasts, you're going to see like the same 10 names all across the board being invited. I suppose there are company CEOs who enjoy being heard and talking about their product all the time. Whenever they have an update, they join specific podcasts. And the fact that we have like five or I guess fewer than five that are very big and popular, only contributes to this standardization and centralization of ideas. Like, you get the same people promoting their own brand way too much. They might just sponsor the podcast, and you don't get much information about something else that's happening out there. So that's why I think we need more people focusing on niche ideas for Bitcoin content to regionalize with their native languages and approach them differently or at least have first-time guests who do interesting stuff but don't get on podcasts. That's something that I try to do with every season. And here you have a screenshot from when I first came up with the idea in January 2019. 
I wanted to call it Bitcoin and politics because I went to university and I studied political science for five years and I thought, you know, I would be a complete loser if I ended up not working in the field where I studied for five years. But someone else told me, this guy, Bitcoin Posada, he suggested the Bitcoin takeover slash eclipse or Bitcoin takes on the Leviathan. And basically he gave me the name for the podcast and the website and everything else. I thank him like twice a year. I just sent him a message like, you know, I, I just succeeded with this and it's because of you that I got the name, so thank you. It's just one of these situations where it's good to put your ideas out there so people can improve them, like open source stuff. Hi, John. <laughs> I, I had no idea you'd be in the audience, but I, I thought this image looks very imposing, so I picked it. As a way to represent. <laughs> First time, sometimes they find me as imposing. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. What is podcasting 2.0? And I'm not going to focus on the podcast 2.0, which is a podcast that you can listen and it's made by a couple of people. I'm going to focus on the tools that enable you to do the so called podcast 2.0 because we are here to learn about new tools and this is a lightning conference. And podcasting 2.0 is about monetization using the Lightning Network. What I can tell you, so I don't want to foreshadow what's in the next slides, but what I can tell you is that this monetization is not very reliable, so you should not think in terms of this is going to pay the bills, because it will not. But some people like to reward you for what you're doing, and it's good to do it. And it's also educational for yourself to use Lightning to integrate it into something else. You get better feedback from your audience if they make small payments for it. If they care enough to pay you for it, they're also going to make comments, which usually you, you don't really get. You have a feedback interface in Spotify and Apple Podcasts, I think. In Spotify, you have a ranking or a rating. In Apple Podcasts, you can write like a comment. But that's the most you can get, unless people email you, which is a lot rarer than you think. It doesn't really happen. But with this whole podcasting 2.0, you actually get feedback from people who sent you small transactions. And they're going to be like, oh, I just sent you this amount. And by the way, I liked your interview with this guy. So you should get him more often or approach the same topic more often. And you also have more control over your content if you can replace sponsors. But this is utopian. You don't really expect it to happen. Yes, Jacqueline, please take a picture. <laughs> It's also in the magazine, so you're going to get that next week. Tools for podcasting 2.0. And the best one right now is to run Sphinx on your Lightning Network. Sphinx is available on pretty much every Raspberry Pi dashboard. So Raspberry Blitz, Umbro, what's the other one? MyNote BTC. And I think also run Citadel. I'm not sure about that one, but it should be. You have to register your podcast RSS feed to Podcast Index. Podcast Index is basically an index. It's like a website which contains every podcast that was registered with a Lightning node and can receive tips via Lightning Network. And obviously, I made the reference to this job part image. You have to bro down after you set up all the tools, even though there's a lot of work to do. Don't expect it to ever become passive income when you podcast. You, you have to constantly release new stuff. How to run Sphinx, because that's also important to present like a short tutorial. Luckily, it's very simple, and I'm going to show you with this video. This is the interface for Raspi Blitz. I hope the video plays. Yeah. Let me also check my camera to see if it's still recording. Oh, it's going to stop in 12 seconds, just... 15 minutes, here we go again. So, it's this simple, you just open the extra services menu and you have LND Sphinx Relay. I think the biggest issue is that nowadays we have this agenda to move away from LND and support alternative lightning clients. And I suppose Sphinx could develop something for C Lightning or Eclair or whatever. Or else someone can port it and develop it because it's free open source software. But yes, you need to run LND for now to be able to benefit from 
Sphinx, which I think is the most intuitive and useful podcast 2.0. On Raspberry Blitz, it's installed like this. You just press space and tick this box, and that's it. On Umbrel, you install because it's a lot like the Apple interface. It's a lot more simpler, but then again, people complain about Raspberry Blitz that it's complicated, but it's really not. Like, you, you have an interface which looks like Norton Commander in 1992. Okay, but it's not that bad. I, I like the charm. And when you open a lightning channel larger than 0 0.001 BTC with game B1 or game B2, that's how you connect to Sphinx, because it's important to have a one... No, it's actually a two-way channel, and you have to open it with Thunderhub. Wait, I pressed the wrong button. So, Thunderhub, this is the payment way, which is also available... Wait, how do I play this? Yeah, like this. So, Thunderhub is here. You have to also enable it in your node to make this channel opening that's going to have like an amount, what do you call it? Mm, like an, an amount of money that's going to be there as a guarantee for when the channel closes. It's like a very small amount, a couple of dollars worth of Bitcoin. So you have to open your channel with game B or one or two, which is corresponding to Sphinx app by using Thunderhub. I'm not sure if that sounds complicated or I explained it well. But this is what you need to install from your Raspberry Blitz, LME Sphinx Relay and Thunderhub. With these two, you open a channel with these two and you're good to go for podcasting 2.0. Next up, you have to register your podcast to Podcast Index, which is the place where you search for podcasts that use value for value. And that's what they refer to as when it comes to podcasting 2.0. And all you have to do is take your RSS feed and paste it here, like I did here. You just post it there. You do this stupid CAPTCHA, which you do all the time anyway if you're using the Tor browser. <laughs> you know the pain. You do this and you press OK and it acknowledges that you're human and in my case it was already there. But as you can see there are lots of podcasts there. If mine is 724392, I suppose lots of them have already registered to podcast index. And this will enable people to find your podcast in applications that use value for value or podcasting 2.0, call it whatever you want. So for example, a good way is with the Brief Wallet, which is available on Android, and I think it's in test flight for iOS. But it, it grants you one of the best experiences for a Lightning Wallet, and it's non-custodial by default, which I, I think is the best feature. But in the menu, it also has something for, for podcasts. So you can open that one, and you're going to find all the podcasts that have been registered to Podcast Index, actually, because they take information from Podcast Index and display it in their nicer interface. I think a similar example is also, not these, what's it called, Sphinx. If you're not uploading anything to Sphinx and you only use it as a messaging app, you can join tribes because Sphinx is more than a podcasting application. It's also trying to be like Telegram. And you can join all sorts of rooms and you can find podcast episodes that you can listen. It's pretty good. There are other tools for podcasting 2.0. One of them is Usocial, which was developed by a friend of mine from Romania. And it looks kind of like this. Unfortunately, so far, he only has it on Umbrel, but I hope he's going to port it to all the others. It's like a nice web interface which allows you to visualize to which podcasts you have subscribed and the latest episodes, plus a player with all the necessary buttons. This is like a web application. And as I mentioned, Breeze Wallet has a great UI and lets you listen to podcasts 
Plus, you're already going to have some money in your Breeze wallet, I guess. So if you want to donate to any show, you can do it very easily. What Podcasting 2.0 does, it's very important to delineate between what it is and what it's not. And it allows you to monetize your podcast with lightning micropayments. It enables easy communication and engagement with your listeners. I think I've already said this. Builds communities with lightning enthusiasts. And I, I think this is the killer app here because by doing all of this process and installing Sphinx and running Podcast Index, you're proving to the community that you know you have actually made the effort to look into this and try and support something that's new. And that's going to bring you a lot more attention, at least for a while. And also incentivizes you to keep a lightning node running. And this is what helps the network, because you know that you might just receive some payments with your podcast, so you're going to keep your node on. And in my experience, it's more reliable than the routing fees. I'm not getting too many routing fees because you need big, big channels with, which are optimized in a certain way. But, but with a podcast, you'd be surprised. You will actually get some tips once in a while. And I, I put this picture of John hoping he would also be here, but he, he didn't come. So let me switch. But I have Jack once again. What podcasting 2.0 doesn't do? Your content is still vulnerable to censorship, so it's better to self-host it. And I kind of hate the podcasting 2.0 label. Uh, I've only used it during this presentation because Jeff from Fulmo assigned it to me, so I said, okay, I'm going to do this. But it's not really 2.0 if it's still custodial. In my view, also Web 3.0, which is another buzzword, means that you own the content and you self-host it, not that you still can to unlock it. To me, that, that doesn't make much sense. To me, the internet should return to its original purpose, which was to decentralize content and enable you to be your own server. The only reason why it turned out this way is because we did not have the proper technology, but today with a Raspberry Pi, you can be your own server, which is unprecedented. Back in the 90s, it made sense to pay specialized third parties to handle your files, but today you have fast internet access, you have creatively reliable hardware, and you have very cheap storage. So you can do everything by yourself, and if you think that the power goes down and your website goes down, you can use the UPS, which is like a hundred dollars or something. So what podcasting 2.0 also doesn't do is to replace sponsors with donations from listeners. That's too idealistic. I don't think this is going to happen too soon unless lightning explodes and everyone uses it. But even in this situation, people still prefer to listen from Spotify as opposed to Breeze or from Sphinx. It's just the way it is. And I think sometimes about I'm not sure if you remember Y'all's by Alex Bosworth. It was a platform that it aimed, it, it was very ambitious for its time. It was trying to basically decentralize writing and blogging by enabling you to put a paywall on every article that you post. But the problem is that you create a money system and don't really incentivize high quality stuff to come to you. I think content comes first and the money comes after it. It's not the other way around. It's not that the money is going to attract the best content. You need to actually develop something really great and the money will come later. I think, to me, that makes a lot more sense. And the number of Lightning users and podcasting 2.0 listeners is always and will be for a while smaller than traditional podcast users and listeners. Don't expect your podcast to grow too much in terms of audience just because you installed Sphinx on your node and you registered to Podcast Index, you post about it on Twitter, and people are going to be like, oh yeah, this is really great because you care about lightning, so let me listen to your episodes. But don't expect anything spectacular from it. It's nice to have a feature, but it's not something that replaces everything that you have built. Maybe in the future it's going to be bigger, but for now it's 
very neat and very nerdy. And it doesn't really make much sense, right? Because you can find the same content for free, but you choose to pay for every minute that you're listening on a different platform. Like, most people don't really want to pay for something they can, they can find for free elsewhere, which is why ads are not going away anytime soon, and you can see that I have three of them during my shows. I have Altoro, thank you Joshua, and Wasabi, thank you very much Adam, and Bitcoin Reserve, thank you Nick from Bitcoin Reserve. What needs to be improved about Podcasting 2.0? Because it's still very rudimentary. If you want to install Sphinx, you have to go to GitHub and follow this guide. Basically, my presentation was, uh, was trying to simplify this process. And most people are going to see this and be like, screw this, I, I don't need it. I'm going to go back to what I know from my Spotify interface and leave this for later when we're going to have something like an app that you download on your phone, you point to your podcast, and that's it. I think that's what most people expect. And we need easier self-hosting of podcast episodes and generation of RSS feed directly from your node to avoid censorship. To me, this, this is like the whole point. 2.0 doesn't make much sense unless you own your own content. If it's still your third party owned content that you put somewhere else for people to listen and tip you, then it's just a gimmick. But if you manage to self-host your content on your node, then that's the true revolution that we need for podcasting. You also need better UI, UX to onboard non-technical people. As I said, if it can be done with an app, I guess most people would prefer that as opposed to installing a couple of applications on your node and following this guide, which people are going to be turned away when you see this. Plus, installing a specific application like Thunderhub, where does it say? Yeah, it says here, you have to open it with Thunderhub because that's the only one that supports pushing. That's not really ideal. If you cannot use basic LND or run the lightning and you have to use something specific, most people will just stop at this step and be like, no, this is not for me, bye bye. I'm not gonna try this at this time until it improves. And it would make sense to port the applications to see Lightning and Eclair because, you know, as we have discussed earlier, as Lightning on Twitter is not really the Lightning Network, it's just an option, but should not speak for the entire ecosystem. And also have a shameless plug. I have this magazine, which some of you have received yesterday, some of you haven't, and I'm sorry, I'll try to bring more next time. I had no idea it would be this successful, or I had no idea how many people would actually show up. So to learn more about my journey in podcasting, you can read the second volume from the magazine. And it also documents stuff like the gears and software that I used for recording, how I approached podcasting, and how I got the guests. And if somebody wants to start, I guess this can be useful, because it's intimidating. You think that all you need is a USB microphone and Zoom to make calls. But it gets more complicated and you have lots of roadblocks. You know, technology was supposed to make life easier, but it really doesn't. <laughs> you run into a lot more problems, and the more complex your setup becomes, the more you need to learn. 